Hello again everybody. I thought I'd just do one of me, me quick monologue videos on what's happened with Roger Scruton today. A while back I made a video on Roger Scruton and the words used by the repulsive left-wing intelligentsia. The point I tried to make was that the words were specifically designed to hamstring conservative thoughts and expression and that the words of power should just be ignored, basically. Well, here we are a few months later and Scruton has been bounced for political incorrectness by his own party and all the reptiles are out celebrating, especially the people who are supposed to be on his side, philosophically. Ash Sakar and Corbyn's commies think Scruton should be unpersoned for talking about George Soros and Muslims in relation to Auburn and Hungary and so do people who make a good living calling themselves conservatives. The thing is though, people being fired and banned and deplatformed in Britain for crime think is a daily occurrence uh, now in Britain. But for some reason the case of Roger Scruton interested me. Uh, I mean I did the video on it uh, and I wondered why that was. It's, it's, I used to mock Scruton as well. I thought he was weak and that conservatives like him were responsible for the mess we're in. And uh, to be fair there is probably some truth to that to be honest. But the fact is, Roger Scruton is a better man than the people who are attacking him and vilifying him and having him sacked from his governmental job on architecture. Roger Scruton writes essays on the philosophy of Kant and modernism's war against art and beauty. The people attacking him know nothing of these things, nothing of such matters, of even ideas. They don't care, in fact. I'd say it's that... The, they, they do have an awareness that Scruton is a better, more knowledgeable person than they are that sets them off. That's that's why they don't like him. The political incorrectness is just a pretext to get somebody bumped off. But the reason why they do that, I think, at a deeper level, is because they know he is a better, kind of more knowledgeable person than they are. Scruton is a tall poppy in a field full of stumpy, squalid little nettles, and in order for equality to be achieved, the poppy has to be cut down. But let's just back up here for a second and consider this, because this this is what gets me about the Scruton story. It took a while, but I, I got there. And the thing is, in what world does the word of an ignorant pleb count for as much as the word of a philosopher? That's what it comes down to. In a traditional society, there'd be a hierarchy. Some people's words and thoughts would carry more weight than others. When the man who gives lectures on Kant's transcendentalism expresses an opinion on what's happening in Eastern Europe, he should be listened to and taken seriously, more, more seriously than some fucking spastic writing for a lefty blog. And there were legions of them on Twitter calling him Roger Scrotum and giggling about it. And all of a sudden, it, it dawns on you. It, it, this is what equality looks like. The easily manipulated plebs who should be begging for scraps in the gutter now have the ability to override the philosopher, the wise man, the learned man. He, he is below the moron and the vindictive little rat. It's, this is clown world. In the Bolshevik Revolution, this would have been this, like having a priest dragged out of his church and strangled in the streets. In Clown World, it's an illiterate fat feminist with a Twitter account calling the author of The Ascetic Understanding a waste of space who should just be banished from the public square. As Scruton himself put it, the very reasoning which sets out to destroy the ideas of objective truth and absolute value imposes political correctness as absolutely binding and cultural relativism as objectively true. See you later, folks.